Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to Fujit Splits with me, Fujit. Hello. Basically, I decided to do a little tour vlog because, hey, why not? I've got a YouTube channel. Use it. Now, this is part one, and if all goes well, it will be the first of many such vlogs about this tour. Awesome season, by the way. Those of you who have followed my little YouTube channel for some time will already know that I commentate on some of the major tours. I follow the top teams and I try my best to keep up with all the action. Personally, myself, I'm no stranger to tours, but my experience in the top tours is not just limited, it's almost non-existent. Okay, I've played a couple of top tours, but that was a long time back and I didn't really get far. And most of my actual touring experience is in the realm of QTs. QTs are good fun, but they are nothing compared to the big tours. In fact, they are so different, it's like comparing an apple to a tomato. Yes, they are both fruits. Yes, they are both green and red, or can be. But that's about it. Last autumn, I joined the clan Vale, a previous top eight clan on the EU server that had lost its way somewhat and the whole idea was to help build a team to compete at the top of the game and restore Vale back to well what I thought to be its rightful place. Obviously I wasn't there to train anybody or bring some kind of amazing big brain strat I was there to help recruit some of the best players in the game. What with the access I had to these type of players via my YouTube channel and Discord. With a concerted effort from the leadership team, we were able to bring in a good bunch of exceptional players, and Vale's star was beginning to start to rise again. Now, I would point out, competing on the EU circuit, like any server, isn't exactly easy. There are some truly awesome clans out there, some amazing players, and some very well-established teams, such as Endgame, Loka, APA, Raid, to name but a few. There are also some newer teams with vast Clan Wars experience. Think of the likes of A1N1, um, Imor, Seven Irks, BPS and Akva. Although Imor are not really a newer team. Okay, some of the bigger name teams, such as Legion, had hung up their spurs. But that didn't make the situation of breaking into clan wars any easier. For my part, wow, I was happy to privately stream the training and help out where I could, always knowing that I wasn't really clan war material and was merely a token member of the clan, which suited me fine. I kept plodding along, commentating and keeping an eye on clan's progress, which had been steadily getting more and more competitive and they were beginning to manage to either stay in the top eight or near as damn it. Now that all changed however this autumn. The clan decided to field two teams, I mean why not, it's perfectly acceptable, and it also gives more depth to the overall players in the clan and allow, allow those who are not 100% ready for the top team to at least get a little bit of clan wars experience. Again I was all set to stream as a commentator. But alas, we were looking a little bit short of players. So, of course, I opened my services. I mean, I'm part of the clan after all. Thinking that I would be sat on the bench, cheering from the sidelines and streaming as a spectator. Nevertheless, it became apparent that I was actually going to have to get my hands dirty. In other words, I was actually going to have to roll out and play. Yep, that's right. I was actually going to take part in this tour, potentially against some of the very best teams out there. It's at this point I need to explain that PYS number one, day one, I was actually meant to be doing a reward test stream for Wargaming, and I was meant to be following Endgame, which is always a treat. I had already informed the clan of this, and they were all fine about it, but all that changed when I entered the wrong, or the right room, depending on the way you look at it. Instead of clicking on the room that would have allowed me to follow Endgame, I entered the Veil room, which turned out to be a good thing because we were in fact lacking players. This however kind of stressed me out a little bit. 
What with the games being streamed and a reward stream to boot, I had to change from PC to iPad in a short period of time. I had about a hundred odd people watching uh, and knowing that I was actually going to be rolling out made the overall experience a little bit more stressful than I initially expected. As I said, I am not a mainstream tour player and I'm certainly no pro, nowhere near. Our first opponents were TRNT, a really decent clan with very good clan war experience and comprised of some very good players, much, much better than me. However, I was confident that my hand would be held by those around me in my team and that confidence really paid off. New Beetle was calling and all I had to do was follow my orders. Pretty simple stuff. Obviously I wasn't being expected to be micromanaged. That's never on the table at this level. I just have to go where I'm told to go and do the job I was assigned. You still have to use your own head. I mean, your, your caller, your captain, whatever, they rely on you to bring your own gaming experience to the equation. First game from my side was nothing special. I overextended, I made mistakes, and I needed my nerves to settle down. We won, yes, but I had, it wasn't fantastic. I, okay, I'd made a contribution, but it was very minor. Second game out, I was a lot more settled. Again, I followed my orders. I went to the assigned position and I rotated when I was told to. Aside from that, as I said, as a player you're expected to use your own brain cells, not just rely upon the Cora to micromanage every single movement. You yourself need to step up and I was always worried about screwing up and letting everyone down. This game was much, much better. I still made a shed load of mistakes. I failed to share my HP. I reacted to certain situations slowly, I focused the wrong tank, and I bounced too many shots. This time, however, my lack of clan war experience in doing those basic tricks paid off, and I was able to offer a much greater contribution. Although we did lose Yori far too early, and he did shout at me, for good reason I may add. I failed to share my HP, and that inevitably led to him being destroyed but we all need to learn from our mistakes. Day one, we managed to get to the grand final and the game we met up with TRTMT, this time on Port Bay. By now, I was getting over my nerves and settling in to the overall scene. We went through the strats and I went to the positions assigned. My role in the first game was to spot C, but as it happened, the enemy went to the A cap. So I was told to cap. This I did. We therefore got the advantage. With my nerves settled and totally forgetting that I was actually streaming, I then put myself into a cross-firing position and I had a pretty decent game. Now RNG was either on my side or I was aiming better. Either way I was starting to bounce less. I still made a shed load of errors that most of the pros would shudder at, but I was starting to find my clan wars feet and I was really starting to be a lot less tense. Well, I'm not going to lie, it helps that the team around me know exactly what they're doing. They're very capable, they do have a lot of Clan Wars experience, and we were being led by an experienced Clan Wars player. And they were able to basically mask a lot of the mistakes that I made and carry us to victory. The final game on Port Bay all went according to plan again. But again, I made numerous basic errors. Well, clan walls errors. And this is something I really need to learn from and address those errors. Okay, I was able to contribute, but the errors I was making really do concern me, and they still do. Oh, yep, yeah, we ended up winning. And I was happy with the fact that I was able to contribute and roll out in such a tour and basically improve. But those errors will still, still need to be addressed. We made it into day two, where we would face quick another good team. I was a lot more settled, less nervous, but still my errors, very basic errors are on display for all to see. I know it's a learning curve and it will improve the more I play. And But and I say this when I'm commenting, these tiny little errors can be the difference between winning a game and losing one. Unfortunately, I missed the next round against Imor as I was commentating on end game 
uh, game against Dragon. But the team did what they needed and were again into the grand final, a game facing Immol. I believe this was Immol's top team, but I can't be 100% certain. And our first game on Black Goldville, well, my inexperience really showed. Immol convincingly beat us. They had better positioning, and they made a very good coordinated push on the flank. Okay, I'm still a little bit miffed that I bounced the Vickers twice in a row, especially side on with AP. But hey, it's a Vickers, and hey, my inexperience was showing there, and I need to expect these things. Second game, we almost had Immol. We had the upper hand and outplayed them tank for tank. But they had the base advantage and they won on base points and played a really good strat. Yes, we may have outplayed them in the brawls and tank for tank, but winning those battles doesn't mean you'll win the war. Immol were happy to brawl with us, sat back comfortably in the knowledge they were gaining considerable points lead and they outplayed us overall. Yes, we lost, but boy, it was an experience. Okay, so those of you out there who are pros and been playing Clan Wars for a long time will scoff at my little vlog, no doubt. But you have to remember, I'm an average player who for a long time has been commentating on Clan Wars, and this is my first proper venture into the proper touring side. For me, it was exhilarating, stressful, and truly satisfying. Yes, it was mildly exhausting, especially mentally, with the amount of concentration required. Trying your best not to fuck up too much and doing the best that you can. But the satisfaction outweighs all of that. Yes, we lost the grand final on day two to Immol. That doesn't take anything away from the fact that we made it into day three and are therefore amongst some of the top teams. Something that I, myself, am particularly proud of. That's the point I'm trying to make, really. Many of you out there may not feel that you have the skills or the, or, or, or the stats to take part in Clan Wars, but that's just not the case at all. Okay, you may, not, you may be like me, you're not a pro, and the chances of getting to the very top will be difficult. It's not impossible, but it's certainly not easy. That doesn't mean it will never happen, nor does it mean that you shouldn't ever try. We all need to learn from our mistakes. And I, for one, will do my best to rectify those errors that I keep making. But they do not prevent me from taking part, having a great time, and generally improving my skills overall by playing against and with some of the very, very best players on the EU circuit. Tonight, I will once again roll out with Vale for day three of PYS number one. And no doubt it will be a tough round, but I'm looking forward to the challenge although I do have a little bit of trepidation because I know my skills aren't at the very top level and the last thing I want to do is to let my team down. Don't get me wrong, they are a fantastic bunch. They're incredibly supportive and despite all my errors in general nabbishness, they're willing to help me, guide me and above all, show remarkable teamwork. And I hope we do get through. Anyway, I've been fooded. It's just been a quick vlog on my touring experience. I thought I'd give it a bash. Anyway, by all means, comment and everything below. And I hope you do street to tune in later this evening when I will be streaming day three, where we're rolling out yet again in PYS. Until then, guys, stay safe out there. Have fun on the battlefield and happy tanking. And that is the main thing. I'm enjoying my clan's war experience, and it's making me have. Happy tanking.